Welcome to the third Sunday in the season of Advent. We have three candles lit for this season as we move one week closer to the celebration of the birth of our Lord. We begin worship now with the call to worship as we welcome those over Facebook and over the radio as well. O oh God, our light, if ever there were a people who need your light, it is us. If there was a place where hope needed to be born, it is in the manger of our hearts. The work of your hands surrounds us. The miracle of your coming confronts us. God of hope, come be present in our worship. Amen. Blessed be the Holy Trinity. One God, the Lord of Israel, who comes to set us free. The mighty Savior who comes to show mercy. The dawn from on high who guides us into peace. Amen. After a moment of reflection, together let us confess, hum honestly and humbly confess, that we have not lived as God desires. Loving and forgiving God, we confess that we are held captive by sin in spite of our best efforts. We have gone astray. We have not welcomed the stranger. We have not loved our neighbor. We have not been Christ to one another. Restore us, O oh God. Wake us up and turn us from our sin. Renew us each day in the light of Christ. Amen. People of God, hear this glad, joyful news. By God's endless grace, your sins are forgiven and you are free. Free from all that holds you back and free to live in the peaceable realm of God. May you be strengthened in God's love, comforted in God's peace, and accompanied with the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lighting the Advent candles today, uh, we've done this over video these weeks. Uh, children of your staff members have been lighting the candles, so a big thanks to Raja, Sophie, and Frost, Mackie, as they light the three candles. one candle for joy because the world is broken and the weight is long. But our joy cannot be contained. Like a toddler toppling the thrones of power with a gleeful swipe, joy pierces our silence with song, interrupts our sigh with laughter, unshackles our fumbling feet to dance. My soul magnifies the Lord, she whispers, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. So we light one candle, because it only takes one. Christ is with us. Thank you to the Mackies. You never know what's going to happen when your mom starts working at church. You might end up lighting candles on video. Please join in singing a couple of verses of O Come, O Come, Emmanuel.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Spirit of the Lord God, bring, you bring good news to the oppressed. You bind up the brokenhearted. You proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners. You comfort all who mourn and shower your people with the oil of gladness instead of mourning. A mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. We will greatly rejoice in the Lord. Our whole being shall exult in God for the sake of the one who brought righteousness to life, Jesus Christ, our salvation. Amen. Good morning. As we step into the story today, we are stepping into another book of the prophets. Today we are going to be in the prophet of Isaiah. Isaiah is probably the most famous prophet because he was quoted the most by your favorite Jesus Christ. Uh, he would often uh, use the words of the prophet to explain his ministries. And so some of uh, the words that you're going to read today are familiar. I want to give you just a little bit of context before we jump into the story so you understand what's going on around the story today. Uh, I'm going to introduce you to another empire. I feel like I do that every single time I stand up here. I tell you about another empire. There's one more empire you've got to learn about, probably the most important one in Israel's history, and that's the Babylonian Empire, who in the year 597 BC came to Jerusalem, destroyed it, burned the city down, killed the king, and deported all of the people to Babylon, beginning what is called the exile. And so exile is a really important theme that you read about in the Old Testament. So what you're going to read today in the prophet Isaiah are God's words to the people on their way home from exile. So they were in exile for about 70 years. Now they're on their way home preparing to face the devastation of their former land, uh, and God has some really good words for them today. With that, I'll invite you to stand as you're able and sing the acclamation of the word. seated. A reading from Isaiah chapter 61. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory. They shall build up the ancient ruins they shall raise up their former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. Strangers shall stand and feed your flocks. Foreigners shall till your land and dress your vines. But you shall be called priests of the Lord. You shall be named ministers of our God. You shall enjoy the wealth of the nations, and in their riches you shall glory. Because their shame was double and dishonor was proclaimed as their lot, therefore they shall possess a double portion. Everlasting joy shall be theirs. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. 
I will faithfully give them their recompense, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations, and their offspring among the people, and all who see them shall acknowledge that they are a people whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness as a bridegroom decks himself with a garland and as a bride adorns herself with jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As we come to an end to our short journey through the Old Testament, I wanted to just take a moment to recap what I think are the two most important moments that define the people of the Old Testament. These people that God chose to bless the world. That first moment I want to talk about is the Exodus. With a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, God freed the Israelites from slavery and led them through the wilderness to the promised land. You hear it over and over and over again in the Old Testament that these are God's liberated people. And the second moment is exile. In the year 597 BC, the great Babylonian Empire destroyed Jerusalem, killed their king, burned their temple to ashes, and deported many of the best and brightest of God's people to a foreign land. The first moment, the Exodus, is a story about becoming a nation. Right? How Israel got land and power and a temple and cities and kings. The second, the exile, is a story of becoming a religion. Because it is here in exile that God's people learned how to worship God even when everything is lost. It is here they put their trust not in human kings who have failed them time after time after time, but in God who is at work through all things. It's even here in exile that they wrote down many of their old, old stories and the Old Testament emerged. Exile took a people with nothing else and gave them hope in God. The exile in Babylon lasted about 70 years, long enough that most people never got to see their home again, but short enough that the memory of the land that God once promised lived on. And now 70 years and a few generations later, they were finally allowed to go back home. But going back, never quite looks like it did. Did you ever go back to your high school a few years after you graduated? Or college, or maybe a Bible camp? Somewhere that when you were there, you felt like it was the most important place in the world, where everyone knew your name, where it felt like the whole world revolved around your experience? But when you go back, you realize how quickly people have moved on without you. And in just a few short years, most nobody knows your name. I remember the first time I went back to my college. It was only a few years after I graduated. And I realized right there how different the students were than I remembered them. Surely I was never that young and dumb. Surely I was. But going back never quite looks like it did. For Israel, it meant going back to a land inhabited by other people. People who stayed and people who moved into their land, who now tilled their soil, who now drank from their streams. 
For Israel meant going back to a temple where they once worshipped God, now lying in ruins. The very symbol of God's presence broken in pieces on the ground. For Israel meant going back to a vulnerable reality. Realizing that if all this could fall once, it probably could all fall again. But for Israel, it also meant going back as people who were changed. Spending 70 years away from home, they were never going to be the same. They learned how to be a people without a king, without a temple, and without a border. And so the return from exile didn't quite look like it once did. 2020, in a lot of ways, has felt like a year of exile. An exile from the life we used to know. And no, this difficult year is nothing like having your country burned or being deported to another land, which frankly is a horrible reality that millions of people in our world still experience today. But 2020 has been one of the most painful and disappointing years that many people can remember. Anxiety and depression and suicidal ideation are all on the rise. Millions of people have lost their jobs. Many might never get them back. Our sense of safety and peace is severely diminished. Our country has never felt this divided, and we hardly know who to trust anymore. This year of exile has affected all of us, and in different ways. For some of you, it has meant a year of anger. Anger at people and authorities and institutions who did not act the way you wanted. For some of you, this has meant a year of loneliness, isolated from friends and grandkids, grandmas and grandpas and other loved ones. I think for all of us, it has been a year of mourning. I mourn the fact that most of you have not met my son who will be a year old in less than two months, who has never been to a store or a restaurant or a library, who hasn't met most of his cousins, whose only one and only church service was Ash Wednesday when his dad got to put ashes on his head and tell him he's going to die. It has been a year of exile. But unlike the exile of God's people in Babylon, we won't have to wait 70 years for this exile to end. As you are probably aware, there are some major developments in the world going on right now. In the United Kingdom, a 90-year-old woman named Margaret Keenan was the first person to receive a public COVID-19 vaccine. Just on Friday, our own government approved the use of the same vaccine for Americans. And this very morning, it is being shipped across the country to begin the slow process of defeating this virus. God has been working miracles through the incredible commitment and service of scientists, researchers, hospitals, doctors, and government agencies. Although this pandemic will not end quickly, it does now feel like it might actually end. And that our exile might finally be coming to a close. I can't tell you how many times I hear every week this phrase. I'm just so ready for things to go back to normal. But remember, going back never quite looks like it did. 
work will probably never look the same. School will probably never look the same. And church will probably never look the same. The devastating truth is that in this country, for 300,000 people and their families, normal will not include a loved one in our return from this exile. I try to imagine what it was like to go back to Jerusalem after all those years and seeing the stones of your home and your neighborhoods piled in a heap looking around at the people you're with and noticing all the people who are missing. It must have been devastating. And yet it is here in this broken place that God still speaks. The same God who gave life to the world, the same God who stretched out a mighty hand and delivered God's people from slavery into freedom, the same God speaks again and promises to create a new day for God's people. There might never be going back to normal. But with God, there is always a future. When all we see is ruin, God promises to build. When all we see is lost, God promises a hope that we cannot imagine When all we can do is cry out, God promises a future filled with praise and celebration and joy. Because God will never stop giving us a future. This Advent season, I am reminded once again just how weird and bizarre it is that we attempt to make Christmas so nostalgic. As though Christmas is about the past, especially like the 1950s. Because the truth is, there is no going back to Bethlehem. The baby is born. He taught us love and mercy. He died for our sins and he resurrected to eternal life, promising us an eternal covenant with our God. Jesus is born in 2020. In the midst of your exile, in the midst of your disappointment and fears, Christ is born. Because God never stops giving us a future. Amen. Thank you to the choir under the direction of Cheryl Hewson and accompanied by Michael Stevenson as they sing the song, Let All Mortal Flesh Keep Silence.
Joining the Christian Church from every time and place, let us confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Trusting the Lord's promises to the prophet Isaiah, we are also the Lord's promises to us. Let us pray for the church, the world, and all of God's creation. Dear God, you are our one true source of joy, even through this year of exile. Today, lead us to capture a renewed sense of joy for our lives. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. God of rejoicing, you rejoice when your people manage to reconcile with one another. We pray for families whose envy and bitterness has infected their relationships. Bring healing to old family wounds. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Giver of joy, wake us up when we take ourselves or life too seriously. Remind us how to play and laugh and enjoy the company of others. Lord, in your mercy, hear Hear our our prayer. prayer. In Jesus Christ, you give us the joy of freely serving our neighbor. Open our eyes and ears today to genuinely care for a neighbor near or far. Lord, in your mercy, hear Hear our our prayer. prayer. God, we pray for those whose everyday work does not bring them joy. Let all people find employment that not only provides a job, but also provides a source of meaning and hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear Hear our our prayer. prayer. Be present among federal legislators making decisions on our behalf. Guide the debate and the discussion. Grant wisdom and collaboration. Lord, in your mercy, hear Hear our our prayer. prayer. Where there is no joy, be light in the darkness for those who are sick, especially Rex Farsfeet and others whom we name out loud or in our hearts. We also invite you to add names to the Facebook comments for prayer. Bring comfort and peace to those who are dying and families surrounding them. Let compassion and kindness guide doctors and nurses. Lord, in your mercy, hear Hear our our prayer. prayer. Dear God, offer a promise of everlasting joy for those who grieve. May your gift of new life wipe the tears from the eyes of all who mourn, especially the family of Leroy Farber. Lord, in your mercy, hear Hear our our prayer. prayer. With gladness, we entrust all our prayers to you, our one true source of joy, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen.
You can remain seated as we invite you to share the peace. You can do that by turning around and waving to one another. Don't forget to wave at those who worship over Facebook. You can turn around and see the camera there. I invite you to text the peace of the Lord to others or leave it in the comments of the Facebook page. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Jesus, who long before his birth was proclaimed by the prophets to be wonderful. Jesus, who thought enough of us to come as our counselor. Jesus, who became man just like us yet never ceased to be. Almighty God, everlasting Father. Jesus, the Prince of Peace. He came unto his own, but his own received him not. He was despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to be children of God. a moment now for the offering. You can give a gift online at St. John's webpage, or if you're in the room, there are a couple of offering baskets if you'd like to share a gift that way. As you do that, uh, here on the screen, Amanda Wool is going to tell you what difference your offering makes. She's been a confirmation mentor for several years. My name is Amanda Wool, and I just finished my sixth year of being a confirmation mentor to my second group of confirmation students at St. John's. I love doing God's work in this way because it is super rewarding and fun to get to see these kids grow in their faith and learn about their religion, and they have fun while they're doing it. Um, also, it helps me to grow my own faith by helping 
to educate them, but also knowing that doing something so simple as giving an hour or two hours of my time a month to helping others makes such a huge difference in their lives. Thank you to Amanda Wool and all of you who have shared gifts that way as mentors. We're going to sing a little bit of Christmas now, a couple of verses of What Child Is This? we bring before you the precious fruits of your creation and with them our very lives teach us patience and hope as we care for all those in need until the coming of your son our savior and lord amen the lord be with you, and also with you. lift up your hearts and give to the lord. let us give thanks to the lord our god it is indeed right, our duty, and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. You comforted your people with the promise of the Redeemer, through whom you will also make all things new in the day when he comes to judge the world in righteousness. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Holy one, the beginning and the end, the giver of life. Blessed are you for the birth of creation. Blessed are you in the darkness and in the light. Blessed are you for your promise to your people. Blessed are you in the prophets, hopes, and dreams. Blessed are you for Mary's openness to your will. Blessed are you for your son, Jesus, the word made flesh. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks. He gave it for all to drink, 
saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us pray together the prayer our Savior taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. As you receive communion this morning, you're going to hear special music from your Faith Formation Director, Caitlin Blend, and her husband, Carter. They'll sing to you the song, Light of the World, by Lauren Daigle. Caitlin and Carter are also the ones who created the beautiful design for the hinterland, the screen that you saw earlier, so you are blessed by many gifts from Caitlin and Carter. I'll commune one side at a time, just giving you the bread. So I'll start with this pulpit side of the church. You can come up the center aisle. I'll give you a wafer of bread. You can return up the side. Once this side has communed, I'll come to your side. I do have gluten-free wafers, so if you need one of those, just let me know. This is the Lord's table where Christ is the host. You are welcome here. Come as you are.
can remain seated for the blessing. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Holy One, you, we give you thanks that in this bread and cup we have feasted again on your endless love. Let that love overflow more and more in our lives that we may be messengers to prepare your way, harvesters of justice and righteousness, and bearers of your eternal word, our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. I'll share a few announcements before you go. Um, the most important is asking for your prayers for the family of Leroy Farber, who died this past week. So we pray for Leroy's family, reminding one another of the promise of eternal life that's been given to us in Jesus Christ. You can watch um, probably our Facebook page for details about Leroy's service. Leroy is the father of Faith Simonage, who worked at church for a number of years. A week from today, uh, some great ways to prepare for Christmas. You can be a part of caroling at St. Luke's next Sunday at 1 o'clock, and Cheryl Lance is heading that up. So you could show up at the front door of St. Luke's next week and carol outside around the nursing home and Park Avenue Villa as well. Also next Sunday, service of lessons and carols at 4 o'clock, which, be, which has become a tradition here. You can be a part of that in person in this room and on Facebook Live. And if you haven't heard, make sure you're passing the word around. We have a very special hinterland Christmas Eve for you on the 24th at 3 o'clock. So I hope you're making plans to worship with people far away on Christmas Eve through that service. That's all my announcements. Please stand as you may before we sing. Receive this blessing. May God direct your ways in peace. Make you abound in love for one another and for all. Strengthen your hearts until the coming of our Lord Jesus. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. Our sending hymn, All Earth is Hopeful, we'll sing again verse 1.